Welcome to Sumeri P. So today I'm super excited. This video is for Ben. Ben's requested a special recipe just for him. So I'm sharing my chocolate twist bread. Have you ever wondered how to make chocolate twist bread, sometimes known as chocolate babka or Krantz cakes? I first stumbled across it in one of my cookbooks I had for many years by Otto Lenghi. I didn't know what chocolate Krantz cakes were and realized it was this delicious sweet bread and it's filled with chocolates. It's so delicious. So if you'd like to see how to make my version of the chocolate twist bread, come with me and let's see. So the first step to make the bread, we need to add our yeast. So I've got a little packet of instant yeast. So we're just popping that into the mixer. So then we add 50 grams of caster sugar to the yeast. We've got 60 mils of room temperature water going into the mix. So what we're going to do is just going to whisk it with my little hand whisk. Just going to let that sit for 10 minutes to bubble up slightly. So now we're ready to add everything else into our mixing bowl. So I've got 300 grams of strong white flour. You can also use plain flour and I've also um, made it before with spelt flour. I've got one over here which I'll show you a little bit later on. Let's add a little bit of salt, pinch of salt. And the original recipe, he adds lemon zest, but my twist on it today is orange zest. So I've just got half of an orange zested. We add one egg and then we're just going to combine that on low to start with. So I've got 75 grams of unsalted butter here, already pre-chopped into cubes and it's at room temperature. So I'm just going to add a couple of pieces of that a little at a time to help it combine with the, the dough. And just throw a few more in. Just going to stop my mixer there and I'm going to scrape the sides of the bowl can smell the orange zest. It smells amazing. I love chocolate and orange together. So now I'm just going to pump the speed up a little bit. Just want to make sure that all the dough, all the flour from the base of your bowl is incorporated. We're almost there. The dough is looking like that, but it needs to look a little bit smoother. So we're just going to keep mixing it. I think we're looking good. It's Pretty much cleaned my bowl and my hook. So look at that. Hmm, smells like orange. So it's quite stringy. I'll show you the difference. So that's the white flour, which makes, it's got like lots of protein in there. So the, the structure is quite loose and stringy. I'm just gonna compare it to my spelt flour for you. There's my spelt flour. It's not as glutinous, but it will still make a really good bread. So this is all ready to go. It's a nice rich dough, but we need to pop it in the fridge for at least half a day. I usually make it the day before and let it sit in the refrigerator overnight. So I've just got a greased, pre-greased bowl. I've put some oil spray in there and we just need to make sure it's in a nice bowl. We just let that sit there with some plastic on top. We just pop that in the fridge overnight. Hi, so it's the next day and we're back with our dough that I've just got out of the fridge. This is the spelt one that I baked yesterday. As you can see, we've started eating it and there's lots of yummy ripplenes there. It tastes delicious. It looks a lot darker and it's a little bit denser than the white one. So let's get the white one rolling. We're going to dust our bench top firstly. And oh, I need my rolling pin. It's best to get it out of the refrigerator uh, so it's room temperature. If it's a bit chilled, it'll take a little bit longer to roll out. The next step of the recipe, which I did off camera, all the ingredients for the chocolate spread, I've melted and left the, let it go room temperature. It's better this way. When it's thicker, it actually spreads on better and doesn't go all runny. So we've got 
60 grams of butter, 60 grams of dark chocolate, yeah, 25 grams of icing sugar, 15 grams of cocoa powder, and I've got a tablespoon of brown sugar, but you can also use white sugar. So I'm just gonna spread that on my dough. I just thought I'd also let you know that there's another way you can cheat to put your chocolate spread on. You can use some ready-made chocolate spread like Nutella. But I'm not a great lover of Nutella. I prefer the dark chocolate homemade spread. The flavor is much more intense and richer. Okay, I've left a little bit of a border around the outside edge. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab some water and just brush the outside edge with out this outside edge with some water. So the edge that you haven't wet, we're gonna start rolling. So we're gonna try and make a tube, a roulade, long sausage, whatever you wanna call it. I'm just stabbing it with my nails, trying not to stab it. So you wanna do the tightest roll possible. Oh, my chocolate sauce is looking good. It's not oozing everywhere, which is great. Okay, so we've got a nice tight roll. And now you just wanna pat that seam down where you've wet, and that becomes your base. We just wanna squish that along a little bit so it's a little bit lengthened. Bash your ends in so they're nice and flat. Bash. Okay, so we've got a nice sausage here. Next step is we're gonna grab a knife, either a little serrated one or just a kitchen knife. So we're making a seam, cutting right through the dough, right down the middle. This is to create our twist. So we're gonna plait it in a single braid. So we squish the ends together, so they're kind of locked in to the top of the braid. And then we're grabbing one over the other. And the trick is to try and do as many twists as possible. And that becomes our bread. And then we're just gonna sit that aside for another hour to an hour and a half in a warm spot to rise. So we're gonna pop in our twist bread. If it's too long for your tin, you just swish the edges back into itself. And then we need a damp tea towel just to pop on top. If you don't have a spare damp tea towel, you can add cling wrap or plastic wrap to the top. So we're just popping that on top. That's just to keep it moist. And then we'll pop back in an hour's time when that's um, increased slightly in size. So we're back with our dough and it's risen slightly and we've preheated our oven to 170 degrees so I'm just going to bake this for approximately 30 minutes. I'm going to check it at 25 minutes with a skewer because it might be done by then. So while that's cooking we need to get a sugar syrup happening on the stove. We need to put 80 mils of water in the saucepan, 130 grams of caster sugar. So I'll pop in, I'm just going to use my scales to measure all that. I'm just going to pop in 130 grams of the caster sugar. and then 80 mils of water. So we're gonna pop this on the stove top and let it simmer until all the sugar's melted. And then we turn that off, set it aside. When the bread comes out of the oven, we pour it over while it's still hot. I've poured my sugar syrup all over my cooked bread and it gives it a really nice shiny glaze and keeps it moist for, for a couple of days. Let's just sit that for about 30 minutes before we attempt to cut it because we don't want to burn our mouths. So our chocolate bread, twist bread, is all cooked and ready for the taste test. So I've cut a little slither here, still warm, so let's have a little taste. Can you see that? Looks delicious. Mmm, it's a little bit gooey and super moist in the middle. Yum. And this one here, just to compare, I'm not sure if you can see that, it's my spelt one from yesterday. So the spelt one's more like a wholemeal flour bread, and this one's more like a, a soft white bread. So if you've liked my, I'll finish my mouthful first. So if you've liked my video today, let me know, hit the thumbs up, the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and then hit the bell. And then as soon as I've got a new video, you'll be notified. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Bye. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. <laughs> I can't talk.